Hi everyone. Today I want to show you how to build a cinematic moment in Core. One of the first pieces of community content I created was a cinematic camera. It's been used quite a lot, but I've never made a tutorial for it. So let's get started. So I'm beginning from a blank project and I go into community content and type sniper. I'm going to import the Sniper Alley construction kit by Big Ones. We import that. And it brings in a lot of stuff. What I want to drag into the scene first is this uh, arena sniper alley right here. Add that to the hierarchy. And it adds this whole lot of structure. The next thing I want to do is generate a terrain. And we can just leave all these settings the same. And what we want is the background mouses, that one. Press generate. And in core content, we search for desert. We can throw terrain desert on it. There we go. Um, should be playable, except the spawn point is still all the way here at the bottom. If I hit play, I'll appear uh, below the game. So it's pretty easy to fix. Take the spawn point, move it up. But there is a technique that we're going to be using a lot in this video, which is you select an object and then you move the, the editor camera where you want that object to go. So let's say right here, we're going to be entering this, this door. So we want the spawn point to be around here. So you can right click in this area and say, uh, move the selected object to camera position only in this case. We don't want the spawn point to be rotated. And the, the red arrow shows the forward vector of the, of the spawn point. And it's a little bit above the ground, so I'm going to bring it down. There, so we hit play, and now it should be here in front of this door. There we go. Uh, it has these barrels, and you can destroy the barrels. The next thing I want to do is add a rifle. So here in Project Content, I'm going to search for a rifle. It already came with an advanced rifle. I can just drop that right there on the ground. And if we hit play again, we can approach the rifle. Hit F and shoot at these barrels. Bam! Destroys. And we enter this passage. And it has this uh, this temple room, which is a pretty cool room. So the idea behind my cinematic is what I wanted to happen is when the player steps in this point right here, the cinematic takes over and makes my player walk slowly all the way down here. While my character is walking, the camera is going to pan from here in this direction. It's gonna like show the room. And then I want a second take where it's going to zoom in on this portal. Okay, so that's what we're gonna build. In order to do that, the next thing we wanna do is import the cinematic shock component. So in community content, I'm gonna clear that sniper search and search for a cinematic. There it is, cinematic shot. Port. Collapse everything, and I'm going to add one copy of cinematic shot to the hierarchy. And the first thing I want to change about this is this uh, checkbox. I don't want it to look at the player. So this right here is fine. You can leave it as is. It has this target, but because the look at the target is unchecked, it's not going to follow that. So what it's going to do, it has these two cameras, the camera start and the camera end. And it's going to pan the, the cinematic from the start camera to the end camera. So what we do is we select the camera start. We go in here into the room where we want it to be. And we um, position our, uh, our editor camera kind of in the position. We're going to use that same technique I showed with the spawn point. So I want on the one third, um, one third of the screen my player is going to be. So about right there and the player is going to walk in this direction. So we right click and this time you also align the orientations. 
um, it's going to place the camera right there where our editor camera was. Now we select camera end. Uh, and actually, let me go back to where I was. So with the camera start selected, we can right click and say move the editor camera to where the selected object is and it places our our editor camera back there. Because I don't want to move the cinematic camera, I just want to rotate it. So with the right, with the mouse right button pressed, I can drag here and only rotate. I'm not moving. Um, and I wanted to kind of stop here. Yeah, right there. So the end camera is already selected. Right click and align orientation and position. So let's run this and see how it is. You hit play. And as a shortcut for, for workflow purposes, you can press the M key is the default um, shortcut that comes in, this, in the cinematic shot is right here, the, the play on press. And um, you can press M on your keyboard to start cinematic. Oh, there's a problem. So in the, in the uh, sniper alley, there is something taking over control of the, of the camera. So I think I already know what it is with that selected. I'm going to type slash script to kind of find what it is down here that is uh, causing my camera. And it's like a death camera or something. It took me a while to figure it out the first time, but yeah, it's this death effect controller. So I'm going to select that and close the search. And I'm just going to delete this whole group, this whole death effect. It's, it's uh, overriding my cinematic. Okay, there we go. So I'm hitting play. And now when I press M, there we go. So we have our cinematic camera hands and stops. So I think the positions and rotations are pretty good, but there are a couple of things I want to tweak. So I think the field of view is too high on these perhaps. They're at 90, I want to lower it to 80. I also want it to pan a little slower. So I want this to last for 10 seconds instead of six. And then there's one more option down here is to use an easing function. So this is going to ease uh, in and out of the shot instead of having that abrupt linear movement. Quick press M. So now with the easing, you can see. That's not bad. Try that again. I think the starting camera is a little high because I want my player to be um, a little lower in the view. So what I'm going to do is just go here, select the start camera, F to focus, and I'm just going to tilt it forward a little bit, kind of take a guess. Uh, I want to use a local space control for this. That's why I, und I control Z that. I just want to tilt it down a little bit and then to the right a little bit more like that. Let's try that one more time. Should be good now. Yeah, so that's pretty good. I can press M to skip. So the character is going to start right there. Now we can tune this more later, so let's get moving. Okay, so there's going to be a second shot where the uh, camera zooms into the portal right at the end there. So let it, let's it. let create that. Um, with the cinematic shot selected, Control w to duplicate, and we are going to do the same thing. So we select the camera start, and we go here. And I think I want to be, I want to align this object with the top of the portal. I want it to feel centered. That this is in the center of the screen as well. So I think this is correct. 
right here. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Select the camera start and right click and say move to position and orientation in places. Camera go. So with the scroll wheel, scroll wheel, I'm gonna approach a little bit, close in a little bit more, and then um, right click, select the end camera, right click and align. So that's just going to move uh, my cinematic a little bit forward. And for these, I do think I want 90 degrees of field of view for this second take. Now, the way you make these to sequence is there is a sequence number. So that one is number one, and then this one is number two. And if you keep the same play on key for both, then it will understand that they're part of a group. So let's try that out. M. Second take. There we go. Mm, it's a little high and a little slow. So it's slow. I think. I think for this one, we don't want the easing function. And. It's too long at 10 seconds, so we want to uh, modify some of the settings, remove the easing function. Maybe five seconds is enough. And they are also a little bit high, uh, both cameras. I'm going to just lower them a little bit. And I can get a feel for where it is by right clicking and saying move, move there. So is this what I want? Maybe the second one needs to be a little closer. Yeah, that's pretty good. Try this one more time. Hit Control S to save that because that was a lot of work. I don't want to uh, do something wrong and lose work. So let's see. And I could skip ahead to the second take. If I'm trying to just tune one take, you can just press M again and it skips. They still feel a little high. Yeah, they're definitely high. Um, okay, let's bring them down a bit more then. Let's feel more towards the center. There we go. That's more like it. So let's see the whole thing. We could add some music, some audio as well. It's very quiet right now. That is pretty cool. I want to see it one more time is just to try to catch if there's something I can improve. Maybe this first take is a little slow, so I'm going to lower it to nine seconds. And that'll be the last change I'm going to do. I can hear the helicopters outside. That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to lower this one to nine and I'm done with the first phase of this work. So the second phase of the work is uh, here in the dependencies, there is a template called the Cinematic Trigger Player. So we add that to this spot right here, where the player is going to step. Expand that, there's a trigger inside. So we want to shape the trigger so it's a little thinner. Um, and covers more area so the, the player, you know, tries to jump around or something, uh, they can't, you know, we want to catch the player no matter what they do. So that's pretty good. And um, there was this walk target object, which is where the player is going to move to. 
it's using the shield icon just as a visualizer. So during play, this doesn't appear. Uh, this is just to help during editing, positioning. So I want the player to move further down, around um, here maybe. Now we can tune that, of course. About right there, yeah. And maybe a bit more centered. where this thing is, which is the middle of the altar. So, I mean, they might enter here or here, wherever they enter, they're gonna end up there. So let's see if there are any settings here. So there's the broadcast event. And um, I'm going to add an event called enter tone, but this can be whatever event you want. It can be just any string you want. And then what we do is for the cinematic shots, we select those and we put the same here in the play on event I had already it before I forgot to clear it but um yeah you put the same there and then you can delete this you can keep this for development purposes but if you launch the game with this play on key and someone presses m uh you know during gameplay it's going to trigger the cinematic for them so you don't want that you want to delete uh this once you're done once you're done editing but if you need you can uh you can put it back and, and for development purposes, right? That's a productivity um, option. And if I've done everything right, uh, this should just work. So, so far we've been using M uh, just to trigger the cinematic, but now we're gonna try with the player and we're gonna see if I forgot something. So there it goes, oh. Worked. Looks cool. So this can be some kind of puzzle room where you have to do this, you have to do that um, in order to, you know, unlock the portal and then the portal takes you somewhere to like a boss room or something. So uh, maybe in the game there are, you got to light the torches or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but the way this is scripted out of the box is when you, when you press inside this area, there's a big trigger here. When you enter it, it triggers the portal right away and starts playing this music. So you would obviously modify that if you were actually making a game here. The last thing I want to do is to show how this works with two players, because one of the challenges of cinematics is in a, in a real-time multiplayer game, like most core games, um, is how do you do a cinematic with multiple people? Do you show it for all people? Do you show it for just one person? It depends on the game. So you have those options. You can do it either way. And here I'm going to launch with two clients that is going to simulate what happens if uh, two people were playing. So the first player is going to come in and they're going to approach. Then the other one's going to be here. And let's see, the first player is going to trigger the cinematic. Only they are seeing the cinematic. And then the other person hasn't seen it yet. When this person approaches, then it triggers for them, right? So this template, the the, the trigger player template is designed uh, for a single player, but you could change it to trigger for all players. Um, and that would be a choice for your game individually. That's all for this video. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time when we look at other uh, cool technology and tools in Core.